episode of the Doing Your Own Podcast, I interviewed WWE Hall of Famer, nine-time NWA Tag Team Champion, one half of one of the greatest tag teams ever, the Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton. And due to recording issues, we joined this interview about a minute and a half into it. I hope you'll enjoy. Now let's get into my interview with Ricky Morton. Very sacred. Uh, a lot of people didn't have the opportunity to train. They didn't really have training schools. You had to uh, travel around the shows because they, each territory they wrestled seven nights a week. So, and that's how you learn. That's the best way to learn. Our business is to perform every night in front of a live, a live crowd, I think. And that's the way my training started. That's great. So- well, thank you. Do you know how long you trained before you had your first official match? Well, I had my first match when I was 16 years old. Uh, but this, it was just one of my, uh, I was uh, wrestling back then. Uh, you worked small territories. You only had so many people on the carb and somebody's car broke down. So I was able to take somebody's place because I always had my wrestling bag with me. Uh, they, uh, you know, it, it, which I'm telling you now, you know, I'm a second generation. I have my son, Kerry Morton, which is going to be a third generation wrestler. You can find him on Facebook, Kerry Morton. And uh, I'm a, he trains with me at the school of Morton. I have a wrestling school and you can find it. I have a live show every Sunday at 5.05 Eastern time. So that'll be three hours ahead of you. If you get a chance, I'd love for you to watch it. Matter of fact, on September the 12th, we are having our first big paper out of the school of Morton and all the stars from my school, that the guys that I have trained and everything. And we come on live every Sunday at 5.05 Eastern time too. Yeah, of course. I'm- of course, I will watch it. Oh, do you really? No, I will watch it. Oh, yeah, I, I like for you to watch it. Uh, and you, you have to understand these are all people uh, from my wrestling school. Mm-hmm. I do all the production work. I, uh, you know, I put all their gimmicks together, uh, different things. And uh, what is cool about it, they all come from my school. None of them have been out uh on the road and it, it's it, and it's very good to watch the storylines and watch how they uh transform and into greater wrestlers in our business wow. yeah sure i will definitely watch that good so your uh first match how did that go my first match, I wrestled a guy named Ricky Fields in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, you know what? He was a young guy, too. I think we went a 10-minute time limit in the show. But then, but you see, I was still 16 years old. I was traveling to my dad, and I came back because, you know, it was summertime. And, I, uh, I, I, you know, I had to finish high school. Uh, right out of high school, I didn't even know if I wanted to be a professional wrestler or not because I grew up in the business and it and it wasn't like it was now. Uh, uh, but in our business, and I tell everybody, you have to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, and I was at the right place at the right time. I was, uh, again, I, I rode to a town with my dad. Uh, I was working at a book bindery. And our business is right on the edge of, of changing. And and I, I was at the right place at the right time. And I was, that was for a promoter named Jerry Jarrett out of Memphis, Tennessee. Oh, Jeff Jarrett's dad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jeff Jarrett's dad, it was him. Yeah, he was the promoter then. Jeff was just a little bitty kid then. <laughs> You know, he probably wasn't, uh, he probably wasn't 10 years old. So what has been some of the uh, best advice you have received 
from first uh, coming into the wrestling business? Uh, the best advice. Uh, well, you know what? That's that's a hard thing to answer. There, the only advice, and and the ones that I give is is to watch today's business. Our our business has changed so much over the years. Uh, is you know, and it, it's to never be afraid to be afraid. Yeah, you know, it's like you talking here with me on this interview. Uh, you know, it's our business. You have to be prepared for everything. You know, don't be afraid to stand up. And what I mean by that earlier, not being afraid, but being afraid, is because in everything that you're ever going to do in life, only not only in the wrestling business, when opportunity comes, you have to be prepared. Uh, and what I mean by being prepared, physical, mentally, and whatever they ask you you to do, you're able, you're capable of doing that. And uh, I, uh, uh, and that's what I mean. The best advice I ever got was never be afraid to be afraid. So would you have any advice for younger upcoming wrestlers? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, these days, uh, you have to find yourself a, a legit wrestling school. Uh, there's a lot of people uh, in our business that think they know everything about our business, but truly they don't know nothing. Uh, I, that's the reason my wrestling school is, is successful. is because, you know, I spent 40-something years in this business. Uh, and, 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 and I know it's a whole lot of difference between being at a level in this business. A lot of guys have wrestled at top levels, but they still really don't know. But but then I see a lot of wrestling schools that the guys that run these schools have about as much business training people as me flying the space shuttle. Uh, they don't teach you nothing. They just take your money and, and want you to think that they do know, which I don't know. Find yourself a legit wrestling school. Uh, even though we're the wrestling's entertainment business, you have to train. Uh, you have to, it's just like anything. Uh, when I get in a ring, my wrestling ring is my stage. Uh, I prepare myself for it and, and everything that I do. Uh, so I, that's some of the things. Find yourself a legit wrestling school that's somebody that really knows what they're doing. Uh, and okay yeah so what what has been one of your favorite feuds to be a part of in your career oh well, my favorite feud well in tag team wrestling that buddy you know it's uh we had some of the greatest feuds in the world uh a lot of people ask me a lot of times, what's my favorite match I've ever had? But you got to understand, in our day, everybody was great. All of mine were good. But, you know, I'm sort of a little, you know, even in single wrestling, you know, where I, I had a big feud with Ric Flair while I wrestled the real, the real world heavyweight champion for a many, many nights straight in a row. Uh, we made wrestling history. We changed tag team wrestling. In 1984, before we even kicked in WA in Louisiana, in the Mid South area, with the Midnight Express. And that feud still carries on to today, uh, really. And, uh, and being a part of wrestling, if you just seen us on AEW last week with the, with Tully and Arn, uh, our feud with the Four Horsemen. So, uh, you know, d just the, to single out just one one feud no it's a bunch of them uh, over our career Robert and I carried a lot of territories such as Bit South NWA uh, Smoky Mountain Wrestling uh, it was a whole different era and the, our wrestling business was different so just to pick one out by itself I, I couldn't do that because all the guys that we wrestled in with the best, with the greatest wrestlers in the world at the time. Of course. So whose idea was it for you and Robert to team up to make the Rock and Roll Express? Ah, that was the king, Jerry Lawler, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, they, uh, 
he was looking for a tag team, a young tag team. And, and you know what, Jerry Lawler just told me not long ago, I see him, he says, if I knew that the Rock and Roll Express would last so long, he says, I would have copyrighted it myself. But, uh, you know, you, 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 you got to stop it and think a lot of the great wrestlers that I heard, I came out of Memphis, Tennessee, from Jerry Lawler. You know, Kamala, he just passed away uh, last week, but Jerry Lawler gave Kamala his gimmick. Randy Savage, the Macho Man, they all came out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, there's just so many wrestlers that people don't, you know, Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, the Midnight Express. All, are you there? Yes. Okay, my phone just went blank. I didn't know. I was okay. glad you were here. But uh, uh, Jerry Lawler put together a lot of great wrestlers. Matter of fact, Hulk Hogan even wrestled there. But then he uh, he just wrestled as the Hulk <laughs> at that time, Terry Border. But uh, uh, but Jerry, the King Lawler, to answer your question. He uh, created it, and Jimmy Hart gave us our name. Jerry Lawler put us together and created the Rock and Roll Express. Wow. So, so when you were feuding with Ric Flair, was there ever a chance that the Rock and Roll Express would break up? Would what now? Would break up? No. Uh, you know what, no. We did for a while, but you know, the only reason why is I joined the York Foundation and the WCW, but the only reason why is I didn't have a job and Robert Gibson hurt his knee. He was out for a year mm-hmm. and uh, at, at WCW, I was with Alexander York, which is Terry Reynolds and Terry Taylor, uh, Curtis Hughes, uh, then finally Tommy Rich joined in, but the reason, but, but soon as Robert's knee got better. Uh, he came back and met him with the Smoky Mountain Russell, and I left WCW. Uh, but no, uh, it, you know, it, and a lot of people don't even know this. As I was feuding with Ric Flair, they wanted to put the world heavyweight title on me, which I did win it. But nobody knew about it because after I won it, they wanted Robert and I, they wanted me to, to leave the Rock and Roll Express, so I gave the belt back to them. And I told them no. I, uh, uh, I'm more loyal to Robert Gibson than I am to have that belt around my waist, even though it would have been a great asset for me. But I have no regrets in the business. You know, if I had everything to do over, I'd do it the same way again. Just wished I made more money. That's all. Okay. All righty. Hannah, uh, I'm not trying to cut you short. Uh, but my phone is blowing up. I, he, I have to leave to go to Pennsylvania. My wife is going to drive me up tonight. That way we miss all the traffic. I want to thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Uh, I want to thank everybody there. Uh, it's, you know, you, I know the difference in times. Uh, but you could call me and if you, you have my phone number. Yeah, if you ever want to do something else. Uh, my phone's always open to you. Thank you for being so nice to me. And uh, thank you for letting me be a part of your show. And you have a wonderful night. You hear me? Of course. Thank you for being a guest. No, thank you, ma'am. And you have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.